In today's news, Reimer leads Caribbean Met Council session. 17-year-old charged in string of burglaries. BVI Christian Council makes plea amidst rising crime. Christopher reports for the OECS. Overdrive hosting food drive. Pioneering Greatness Women's Conference is geared up. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 News returns. Rashford made it. Manchester United have come from behind to lead. At home or on the go, watch CCT Live. Download our app and carry your favorite TV shows, news, or live sports anywhere you go. Visit cctbvi.com forward slash live, select your package, and tune in. At Partners for Kids, your child's health and happiness are at the heart of everything we do. We've been the trusted medical home for children and adolescents up to 18 years old. And now, we are excited to welcome a new member to our family of healthcare professionals. Introducing Dr. Aisha Maxwell, our new family practitioner. Dr. Maxwell brings a wealth of experience and deep passion for pediatric and adult care, ready to join our team in providing first-rate health services to your family. At Partners for Kids, we believe in a collaborative approach to healthcare with partners in physical therapy, occupational therapy, and clinical psychology. Partners for Kids, where caring is just the beginning. Visit us at Road Reef Plaza Tortola, open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call us at 284-444-5437 or reach out at info at partnersforkids.com to learn more. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of 284 News. It is Friday, November 22nd, 2024. I'm Ron Grant bringing you the very latest out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands. A happy Friday's wish to each and every one of you and of course a happy cultural day to everyone across the Virgin Islands. Thank you so much for joining us. Minister for Communications and Works, the Honorable Kai M. Reimer, has officially assumed the chairmanship of the Caribbean Meteorological Council during its 67th session held in the British Virgin Islands, addressing regional leaders, meteorological experts, and international representatives, Reimer underscored the critical role of the services in advancing disaster risk reduction, sustainable development, and economic stability across the Caribbean region. This gathering presents us with a unique opportunity to reflect on our achievements, identify gaps, and outline a forward-thinking agenda that aligns with global initiatives such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the Early Warnings for All initiative. Our shared mission is clear, to ensure that no one in our region is left without access to the timely and actionable information needed to safeguard lives, protect livelihoods, and build climate resilience. Meteorological services lie at the heart of disaster risk reduction, sustainable development, and economic stability. The critical functions of our national meteorological and hydrological services, including early warnings, impact-based forecasting, and support for strategic decision-making, are essential for protecting life and property enhancing aviation and marine safety, and supporting key economic sectors such as tourism, agriculture, and fisheries. Reimer emphasized the urgency of the United Nations early warning for all initiatives, calling it an essential step in reducing the impact of disasters. The minister pointed to a recent extreme weather events, including hurricanes Irma and Maria, and Dorian, as well as record-breaking heat and flash floods within the Eastern Caribbean, as evidence of the region's multi-hazard risk environment. In the Virgin Islands, our economy is deeply intertwined with weather and climate conditions. Recognizing this, we are taking deliberate steps to establish a nat national meteorological service that will serve as a cornerstone for building a resilient and sustainable territory. This initiative aligns with our National Sustainable Development Plan and will enhance our ability to respond to severe weather events, mitigate disaster risk, and contribute to regional and international meteorological efforts. The UN's early warnings for all initiative is an urgent call to action that demand 
for our collective effort. We know that early warnings saves, save lives, reduce economic loss, and empower communities to act before disaster strikes. Achieving this ambitious goal requires investments in infrastructure, technology, human resources, and most importantly, partnership. Our region has already witnessed the transformative impact of events like Hurricane Ivan in 2004, the infamous Irma and Maria in 2017, Dorian in 2019, and Beryl, Beryl earlier this year. Even this month, islands in the Eastern Caribbean experienced devastating flash flooding unrelated to tropical cyclones, while broad swath of, region, of the region faced record-breaking heat and pre predicted by the, the regional climate center and our national climate services. The incoming chair, Reimer, pledged to foster a forward-thinking and collaborative approach among member states. The session also welcomed esteemed delegates from CMO member states, representatives from the World Meteorological Organization, the University of the West Indies, and other international partners, marking a significant step in the region's collective response to climate challenges. In the Virgin Islands, we are grateful for the CMO support as we work towards establishing our own National Meteorological Service. The expertise and guidance provided by the CMO and the World Meteorological Organization are invaluable as we navigate this in transformative journey. Looking ahead, we must maintain our focus and modernizing our meteorological services to meet the evolving demands of a changing climate. These include four points. One, prioritizing the deployment of technology, infrastructure, and system to, develop, to deliver precise and timely warnings to all communities. Let me say that again. Prioritizing the deployment of technology, infrastructure, and systems to deliver precise and timely warnings to all communities. Enhancing impact-based forecasting, so our forecast must go beyond predicting weather to providing actionable insights that inform decision-making and drive desirable, desirable responses from our communities. Building capacity through professional training and knowledge sharing, which are critical for equipping our national meteorological and hydrometeorological services with the skills and expertise needed to address emerging challenges. And for securing climate finance through the exploration of innovative finances, financing mechanisms to ensure sustainable investment in meteorological services. 17 year old from Mayo from Joss Van Dyke has been charged with multiple burglaries. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force confirmed this, that he was charged in connection with multiple burglaries reported in Butu Mountain, East End, Great Mountain, and Mount Healthy. The teenager has been charged with four counts of burglary and one count of criminal damage following the investigations into the incidents. This duress, they say, demonstrates our commitment to addressing the concerns of our residents and ensuring that offenders are held accountable, said Acting Commissioner of Police Jacqueline Van Spool. Van Spool acknowledged the broader societal issue of youth involvement in crime, stating, and I quote, the involvement of so many young men in crime should be a concern for all of us in our society, and it will take an all-hands-on-deck approach to solve this serious problem. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force has urged residents to come forward with any additional information that could aid in solving these and other crimes. Tips can be submitted anonymously via Crime Stoppers at 800-8477-1284-800-8477 or by contacting the Intelligence Unit at 368-9339. Up next, viewers, we have much more on the local scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break.
Attention, Anagata residents. Attention, Anagata residents. CCT is coming to you. That's right. CCT will be visiting Anagata every third Wednesday of the month. Need to pay your bill? Sign up for a new service? Or have a customer service concern? CCT has got you covered. No need to leave the island. CCT is here to make staying connected easier than ever. Mark your calendars for every third Wednesday starting October 16th. And visit us for all your CCT service needs. For more information, call us at 444-4444 or follow us on any of our social media pages. See you soon, Anagata. At Hire BVI, we're not just about business. We're about empowering lives. And that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Hire BVI, where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for sticking with us. In light of the high level of increase in criminal activity, the BVI Christian Council in a recent press release say they are calling on all members of the Virgin Islands community to come together to counteract the surge of violence and lawless behavior that is impacting our territory. The statement said, and I quote, while we recognize that the recent shootings and threats of shootings are the acts of a small minority, the reality is that it affects all of us and touches all of us. If left unchecked, we will find ourselves living with fear and distrust as we lose the sense of our community and neighborliness that has been a hallmark of our home. The release by the Christian Council further stated, and I quote, we must not throw up our hands in despair. At its best, Christianity is a religion of hope, a religion of love based on God's love for us and evidenced through our love of others. The BVI Christian Council recognizes, they say, that we who call ourselves Christians must show that love by working together with others for the benefit of our wider community. We cannot, they say, continue to complain about our young people or about parents who lack parenting skills without helping to create solutions. The council stated that in a recent meeting with the Premier of the Reginalds, Dr. The Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley, that the BVI Christian Council offered its assistance in developing and maintaining programs to address some of the challenges, including mental health, facing our youth and young adults. Prior to last month's meeting, a document was developed after conversation and interviews, they say, with young people within the community and other stakeholders were shared with the Premier's Office and the Ministry of Education. Among other things, the BVICC called for an update on the National Youth Policy managed by the National Youth Council to replace the policy which expired in 2019. It also pointed to the importance of youth work in deterring violence, drug use, and early pregnancies while increasing educational and employment opportunities, improving social interaction and physical and mental health by building core values, giving youth a voice, and developing artistic and technical skills. The Council further noted the ongoing work of faith-based and social groups and the document is said to have stressed the importance of such youth work being married to other youth-targeted services such as the education system. The BVI Christian Council urged more funding so that more young people could be reached. Given the wide cross-section and the broad reach of its members, the Council expressed willingness to work with the government of the BVI to craft and execute a workable National Youth Plan. As COP29 came to the close, the BVI's Annika Christopher reported for the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States on the negotiations that took place on the ground at the event. Here's a look at her report. COP29 has concluded here in Baku, Azerbaijan. After two weeks of meetings and negotiations, there have been several significant outcomes. The OECS continued to be a voice for small island developing states, hosting and participating in several side events and supporting negotiation teams from across the region. Here are some of the outcomes. One, 
establishment of international carbon market standards. Negotiators have agreed on a framework under Article 6.4 of the Paris Agreement. This enables the trading of UN-backed carbon credits between countries. This means unlocking significant potential for climate finance for small island developing states, including the OECS. Progress on the loss and damage fund. Loss and damage has been a contentious issue for climate change cops. The loss and damage fund was created to support countries who have been adversely affected by climate change. The fund is now ready to receive contributions and will begin financing projects in 2025. Several protesters demonstrated at COP29 demanded climate finance. Developed countries pledged to increase climate-related funding. Multilateral development banks, including the World Bank and the European Investment Bank, committed to increasing their climate-related lending to $120 billion annually for low- and middle-income countries. The Asia Development Bank announced an additional $7.2 billion to support climate projects, such as adaptation programs targeting glacier melts in Central Asia and Southern Caucasus. Though these are significant options to address funding for the climate crisis, small island developing states have been agitating against having to borrow funds after severe climatic events since it puts them in further debt. On a more positive note, nonprofit investor Acumen has committed $300 million for the next five years for agriculture adaptation projects in regions including Africa, Latin America, and Asia. Adoption of the COP29 Hydrogen Declaration. A commitment was made to scale up renewable clean and low carbon hydrogen production while decarbonizing existing hydrogen derived from unabated fossil fuels. This initiative aims to accelerate the global energy transition. This would help with the reduction of greenhouse gases. Enhanced climate ambitions. Several countries announced strengthened climate targets. The United Kingdom pledged to reduce carbon emissions by at least 81% by 2035, focusing on renewable energy expansion. Australia committed $50 million to a global compensation fund aimed at assisting poorer countries in recovering from climate change effects, becoming the sixth largest supporter of the fund. The OECS will continue to represent and advocate for the needs of its member states at international forums such as this to ensure environmental sustainability, economic stability, and a better quality of life for its citizens. Up next, viewers, we have much more on the local scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Attention Anagata residents! Attention Anagata residents! CCT is coming to you! That's right! CCT will be visiting Anagata every third Wednesday of the month. You need to pay your bill? Sign up for a new service? Or have a customer service concern? CCT has got you covered! No need to leave the island, CCT is here to make staying connected easier than ever. Mark your calendars for every third Wednesday starting October 16th and visit us for all your CCT service needs. For more information, call us at 444-4444 or follow us on any of our social media pages. See you soon, Anagata. Just give me my service. Yeah. Just give me my service. Just give me my service. <laughs> Make the switch to CCT and get connected today. Unlimited talk, text, and data. Visit any CCT store or call us at 444-4444. CCT, life unlimited. Welcome back everyone and thank you all for sticking with us. Local band Overdrive will be hosting a food drive to benefit the Family Support Network in the Virgin Islands. Band members Shea Cameron and Royce Percival spoke on why the band chose to lead the efforts and what the band has been up to. You can say we have a lot of things in store for you for the community. Um, projects aside, you know, kind of working on an album. Okay. Um, 
uh, working on collabs and um, working on connection within the industry. Uh, aside from music, you know, our product, our uh, niche, we, we want to, we're aiming to get into philanthropy, you know, hence, Beautiful. you know, um, the, 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 the get back, the, the drive, the Christmas drive. Additionally, he spoke on the location of the food drive. We said the community has been supporting us. Our fans have, have our backs and let mm -hmm. us know we're doing what we need to do to get them going. So we said we should be giving back to them, helping out as much as we can, doing our part as, you know, role models as such. Um, so we said we want to donate. We chose the Family Support Network Beautiful. as... Um, main, main contributor. Uh -huh. Uh, we will be doing two locations where you can do drop-offs for that donation. That would be on the rocks and one more. Okay. Importantly, specific details of the food drive were shared. So it starts Monday, I know Monday is a holiday, but Monday up until the 24th of December. Okay. Uh, we have two locations. We have one mat, Superstore, Pop or Sell. Um, and, and you could donate during the business hours from 7 to 9. Okay. Uh, and then the next one be on the rocks. And that would be from 12 until close. Wonderful. Yeah. And what specific items would you prefer persons to uh, donate? Um, Non-perishable good, unexpired canned goods. Percival spoke directly to the importance of such community initiatives. It's very important, you know. Um, we have a saying that, you know, it takes a village. Mm. And that it's, <laughs> it's mainly f surrounding kids. Yeah. But it really takes the efforts of everyone to develop, to strengthen our community. Agreed. You know, for me and for the band, you know, giving back is, there was, it was, there was so much given to us, mm. opportunities, even when we were novices, we, get, we got a lot of blight. So it's, it's all time now to give back. They also spoke on other activities taking place within the band. For the full interview, visit all Tweet for Media platforms. Pioneer and Greatness BVI is hosting a women's conference with a number of powerful guest speakers. The event aims to feature impactful presentations geared towards uplifting and inspiring women across the region. Thank you. Well, I'm eager, excited, happy. It's been a difficult path okay. so far, but an exciting path. Because the idea of bringing people together in uncommon places, trying new things mm -hmm. and talking about their greatness is something we've been working on for the past six years now. But I knew full well it was time for persons to understand behind my energy, mm -hmm. behind the movement, is also a wonderful, amazing, talented woman. Miss Sis, pioneering greatness. So what else better in the sixth year to have a, a conference where you can see her energy, her wisdom, and still continue the movement of making people better than, than they are right now. Amazing. And Dr. Allison Flax Archer spoke about what women can expect. I am extremely excited about the sharing. We have so many different women, mm -hmm. different walks of life that, that have so much to share. You know, as women, we experience so many different things that it, it's important to talk about it, important to share. As we navigate life, we've never been through life before, so I think it's important that women of all ages have a conversation about what some of our challenges are and what some of our successes are as well. She also provided specific details relating to the event. We are looking forward to women at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, 7th of December to journey across the shores to Peter Island Resort where we will share. This year, we are going to be wearing pink and red. Okay. Lots of conversation around the pink and red, but in thinking about the colors, they represent such beauty. We have the purity you, you know, within the color of pink. Mm -hmm. We have courage also within the courage of red. And merging those two, we thought that it would be a nice, a nice collage of colors. We're asking that women not wear heels okay. because there's some nice surprises that are going to take place during the day and we want them to be comfortable, to be comfortable. as well. Exactly. All right. Additionally, she spoke on the featured guest speakers. So we have 15 speakers, 15, wow. 14, 15, 
we might have 20, there's a surprise. Okay. So okay. We, ha we have a number of speakers ranging from persons coming internationally. We have Do Dr. Beth Sarah Wright, who's also coming in, Laura Arthur. We have uh, Dr. Catherine Wilson. We have Brittany Turner. And we wow. have some local women as well that are pioneers within their own rights. They're strong women that have things to share. We are going to be kicking butt as it relates mm -hmm. to how we deal with cancer. We are going to be joining and merging women as women in general, uh, building the bridges between women. We are going to be talking about legacies. We're going to be talking about how we support our partners, the men in our lives, and so much more. Most importantly, Dr. Archer provided ticket information. Our annual celebration party is when we bring all people together to just have a wonderful celebration. Being Mr. Pioneer Greatness myself, I will say a few words to inspire people, but we have a international DJ, female DJ, Nina K, and she is globally known. She spins throughout the world, Europe, all throughout. She will be on Peter Island, joined by our very own DJ Dre awesome. to bring the, the local flair and the Caribbean aspect and also the global aspect, but it's going to be a party Beautiful. filled with surprises, yeah. The women will join the men and we will have a wonderful time. But I do want to stress, while the Women's Conference is for women, the Pioneer and Greatness Celebration Party in the evening from 8 p.m. until 11 is for everyone, 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 and we'll have an amazing time. Beautiful. I want to talk about tickets and how persons can get their tickets for uh, not only the conference, but the celebration party. Okay, great. Well, tickets 284-542-4348. That's me. So you can contact me for tickets. I'll be happy to get them to you. And we're just looking forward to you getting your tickets so that you can join in the activities for the day. For the full interview, visit all 24 media platforms. And that is it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to follow us for your daily news updates at 284media.com. And of course, follow us on our WhatsApp channel for daily updates, as well as on Facebook at 284media and 284bbi on Instagram and X formerly Twitter. I'm Ron Grant. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. A happy Friday. Goodbye.